Hello. Greetings. Jackie Francis Goad here. Uh, I guess we could call this a sew along. <laughs> I'm sewing by hand because I only sew by hand. Um, I can't get machines to work. And that goes into the, I, I made a dress. Like, <laughs> a, a dress, almost floor length. I need to take up the hem, but a lot of sewing went into this. I sewed it all by hand. There is no machine stitching. I don't even have a machine here. Do I? No, I have my typewriter, but I don't have my sewing machine. And that goes to the point that I'm not afraid of a little work. I'm fine with work. But I want to have a choice of the company I work for. And I want to be able to take breaks. Keep in mind, when I took over care of my daughter, I was pulling 19 hour days. Without the medication I take for PTSD and other things, um, like clockwork for years, I will go to bed at two and wake up at seven, naturally. I can only get five hours of sleep. And that time was jam packed with just trying to manage a household. Um, some of that I took on myself. Others was, you know, like when I went to my husband's like, hey, I need a break. He's like, well, I don't know if that's allowed. And I'm like, where's that in the Bible? Like, well, I'll pray about it and ask the priest. Anyway, I'm not afraid to do a little work, a lot of work, but I get like 10 hours of sleep now. Um, and the work is for my businesses, for my personal needs, for my personal wants. Um, you'll have to excuse the music. <laughs> it's summertime, and uh, the barbecue, and it's Saturday, and the the bar the the summer summertime barbecues are going. So, what am I trying to say here? There is in this video we're going to cover the sexual component of my labor trafficking situation. I am not a sex trafficking victim. But there was, because I'm married to my trafficker, a sexual component. And that was built in by his version of Catholicism. And I guess my version of Catholicism too, because, you know, I kind of bought into it. Um, see, I was fine with doing the whole obey your husband thing. Because I was under the impression that he took seriously the love your wives as yourself portion. He didn't. He was really into that obedience thing, but not so much into the love your wife as yourself. Um, so, sex was essentially required um, be out of concupiscence. So, because of a person, namely a man's, natural inclination to sin sexually, it is the job of the spouse, usually the wife. It can go the other way. If the wife wants to have sex, then the husband should oblige her unless he has a pressing reason not to. Um, but in most situations, it is the wife's requirement, unless something's wrong with her, she's on her monthly, she has a headache, she's not feeling well, she's pregnant. Um, and not feeling well, I don't know if just being pregnant counts. Um, she is required to fulfill his sexual needs. Um, and, you know, I knew that going into it. And the thing is, the sex part wasn't that bad. Now, I've never actually truly been satisfied because he had a lot of issues from his porn addiction um at first you know being the newlywed stage there was kind of that mutual mutual respect i tried to give him what he wanted as much as possible um but he also respected me but by the end it had gone from, 
I, you know, I, you know, I, I'd like to, you know, and had become, he said himself, I'm not requiring it because I know you're having a hard time, but I am requesting it. The hard time he was alluding to was the fact that by that point I had had two miscarriages in less than a month. Um, the first miscarriage happened and I had pregnancy tests to prove that I was pregnant. I had not yet gone to the doctor because it was early, but I had pregnancy tests to prove that I was pregnant both times. And the first time it was due to being forced to take care of his brother's children that caused the first miscarriage. And then within a month, he wanted to have his rights fulfilled and I got pregnant again and having a pregnancy that close to a miscarriage and the workload and all these different things naturally I miscarried a second time um, and the closeness of the two miscarriages indicates the level of requirement I was required to fulfill. Um, you know, there wasn't a whole, and there wasn't a whole lot of, okay, well you just rest and, and maybe I should have been more, no, I guess it wouldn't work. Well, actually by the end, I'm like, okay, on pain of mortal sin going to hell, I could not deny my husband except for a grave reason by the end I'm like if you keep causing me to get pregnant and miscarry one of these miscarriages is going to take me out too or my ability to ever have kids again is going to be taken out too so I'm like until we figure out this situation and we'll get into more details about the situation um, where he tried to separate himself from his mother and lost his freaking mind, he's very attached to his mother. Like, pathologically attached to his mother. I'm like, so when he tried, and everything blew up because he forced me to take care of his kids and it all blew up in the family and all this stuff and I'm just, you know, it, it just fell apart and then we talked to the priest and I feel the priest on everything that what's going on, the workload, the him making me go around his racist family members. And I mean, keep in mind, his mother said the same woman who had black domestic servants growing up in Louisiana also said to me, to my face, but also behind my back and then to my over the phone, I'm not racist. I just don't like black people, especially after having met you. Um, so there was, it all blew up, but we can get into that, de those details later. Right now we're just kind of trying to lay out the groundwork of what makes this a human trafficking situation, why I had to get out and why he wouldn't let me leave and stuff like that. But it had gotten to the point where I'm like, we, we can, you, because I'm Catholic. So you know what that means? No birth control. Um, so the only birth control we had was me saying, you're not touching me. You are not touching me for at least six months to a year until we can figure this situation out because you're falling apart because you don't have your mommy and I got to take care of the baby and you're practice. He was saying things like, oh, I wish you could just shoot me right now. I wish you could just take your gun and blow my head off because he couldn't talk to his mom under the priest direction. The guy just, you just don't. Get, and I had always said, don't get between a baby, a, a woman and her baby boy. Cause I saw that happen in my family. I did not realize that it was the same way in his. But as time went on, and I saw just how bad off he was without his mother, I'm like. 
I don't know when we can be together again. Because he's falling apart. The workload is so immense for me. I got to hold it all down. We, I mean, I, how, how, you know, it, it, the, the risk of getting pregnant is very strong in this one. <laughs> I'm a very fertile person. Uh, because of his issues, I was actually a pregnant virgin for the first several weeks of our marriage. Um, and so, you know, you look at me right and <laughs> I get pregnant. So I was the birth control by saying, like, yeah, you're not touching me. You're not touching me. At first it was like six months and he'll get better. And some of the, like, and I'm like, okay, we got to push that out for a year. And I was thinking, I still want a big family. I, I want a big family. I want my daughter to have siblings. I want her to have the big family lifestyle. I want all that for her. So she's not alone. Because I had a small family and I ended up extremely alone, as indicated by this marvelous uh, shelter. Um, I make Barbie clothes, in case you're wondering why I have a Barbie on display. But I also have... American Girl stuff on display, but I don't make clothes for them. So I like dolls, but I'm not really into arms. Anyway, it had gotten to the point where I'm like, well, we got to start again, like pretty soon here. Cause I'm, you know, 31 at the time, you know, gotta, you know, we want to have kids. I want to have kids. I want to have a big family. He might be a complete screwball. But I'm telling you what, like, I, I much rather have a bunch of kids and have a screwball husband than like, not have a bunch of kids and have a screwball husband and one kid. But over time, I'm just sort of like, yeah, my kid might end up being a, an only child. As in, like, we will never get together ever again. We'll be married. We'll be under the same roof. But we ain't ever doing this again because this man is too thoroughly broken. Um, or at the very least it was, I'm sorry about the light. It was, I don't know what the light's doing. I'm sorry. It was indefinite with the, once you can improve and you don't run the risk of killing me and my children through your antics, um, you know, then we can, you know, get back together. But at this point, the risk to my health and my life, not even health, my life is too great because I mean, two miscarriages in less than a month. And then he, and then and after the second miscarriage, he's like, well, I'm not requiring it because I know you're having a hard time, but I am requesting it. And I gave him what he wanted. But then I started thinking, I'm like, this, this man's going to get me killed. Miscarriages are dangerous, especially if you get far along, enough along. They, they can take you out. You know, I've known women who almost bled out all over the floor, you know, um, you know, in front of their kids, you know, so, you know, I'm like, this could, this could be lethal if we keep going down this route. Um, and that's when I put my foot down, but he was starting as he like, okay, I respect, okay. Because by that point, it was so broken down. But over time, he was starting to say things like, oh, well, that's going to be really hard. And I'm like, I don't really care if it's going to be hard. At least I'll be alive. Um, but I was at, I was gone by the time uh, it got to the point where he was requesting or requiring. And once he came out with that news about him touching kids, I'm like, this man will never touch me again. Ever. I was so like, discombobulated that I was trying to figure out how to still live with this man and have my daughter in the same house with him. And I'm like, well, I'll just never leave my daughter alone with him as if that was going to work as if somehow I'd be able to just always be with her all the time and never leave them alone together. Um, plus I hear people with those proclivities, they find a way. Um, so that is the sexual component of my human trafficking situation. I'm not a sex trafficking victim. I'm a labor trafficking victim and part of the labor involved the sexual act. Um, and that was both baked in from, no, it was completely baked in from his version of Catholicism, which was at one point my version of Catholicism, which is women obey your wives and you must see to your husband's sexual needs. 
um, or your spouse's sexual needs because it can go the other way but it, come on how often is the woman like you know hey guy I'm demanding my rights now and the guy's like no thanks no thanks except on that movie watermelon man so I think that closes out this video we're at 15 minutes so um, thank you for stopping by um, like subscribe there you go the the, the obligatory uh, like subscribe I guess comment man the comments are gonna be weird but anyway there you go thank you